Thank you so much. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, well, as, uh, as you already know, my name is Calvin Neufeld, um, and I'm here with my mother, Francine Neufeld, who is the author of this beautiful book, Suffering Eyes, A Chronicle of Awakening, which I edited and published. And uh, I should mention that all proceeds from this book support farm animal sanctuaries. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Um, I'm going to be giving sharing some readings from the book. Um, and as you know, as everybody here knows, Anita Krasnick has been uh, charged with criminal mischief for giving water to thirsty pigs on a slaughterhouse bound truck. Her defense? We must give water to the thirsty. Honoring this, the theme of uh, my talk and the readings today will be simplicity. The simplicity of suffering, the simplicity of awakening to suffering, and the simplicity of responding to suffering. Simplicity is an easy thread to draw out of the tapestry of this book. In an early media release, I wrote that my mother renders irrelevant the academic, legal, and religious debate on the moral status of animals by turning her undefended gaze into the eyes of the suffering ones themselves. There, the truth is plain, the horror undisguised, the pain unimaginable, and the answer unarguable, restful. The same could be said for Anita and her powerfully simple story which makes the truth plain, the horror undisguised, and the answer unarguable. We must give water to the thirsty. If that doesn't open eyes and hearts, I don't know what will. And this brings us to our first reading, which for me represents the simplicity of awakening. In this case, my mother's awakening at the age of 49, when we were living in Europe, is called the end for me. What I remember is the smile. Its body lay ravish, split open to reveal the source of each consumable body part. But the face looking towards the camera wore a smile. I kept that flyer from the supermarché for a long time, ready to pull it out and amuse our visitors. Look at what people in this country find appealing to their appetites. Can you imagine? Aha. Birds in the marché hung fully intact so that purchasers would not be cheated. Limp testimony from heads and feet, which only hours earlier had served their own purposes. <coughs> Whole grocery aisles devoted to Shabbat, ah, my childhood friends. Despite a lifetime of practice, I found myself unable to keep my blinders in place any longer. They were slipping from my eyes, and I began to see that what was on my plate was staring back at me. Meanwhile, that smile hung disembodied in my consciousness. I could not banish it. And then one day, we found ourselves stopped behind a truck, its back doors wide open. That which had been severed, severed from the smile hung there instead. Row after row of naked bodies, Exposed, raw, unspeakably wronged. That was the end for me. <coughs> what is it that changes hearts? We don't know. But it is always something simple. Always something simple that gets through and pierces our defenses. And that's what makes Anita's story so powerful, is the simplicity. Anyone can see the absurdity of making it a criminal act to give water to an animal suffering of thirst. And seeing the absurdity of that exposes the absurdity of the rest of it. And this brings us to our next reading, which for me represents the simplicity of suffering. It's about, it's an encounter that my mother had with suffering and possibly the first time that she consciously got that close to that intensity of suffering.
and I couldn't resist this one in the context today, Toronto Pig Safe, Trucks and Pigs. It's called, I Wish It to God. Trucks frighten me now. They are my accusers. Eyes look out from them, straight into mine as I travel behind. Babies cry in the heat and thirst and fear of them. I heard them. I thought they were human babies. But they were pigs. Piled layer upon layer. No voice but a cry. Exactly a baby's cry. The sun was blazing down. No air. No water. The truck parked at the rest stop. I saw and I heard and I wished to God I had not. I drove away helpless into my own world, my soul shriveling within me, those baby screams ripping my heart open. There was another time and another place where others stood by and watched and did nothing, just like me. History has accused them. I don't have to wait for history. I accuse myself. Suffering is simple. To the one who is suffering, there is only suffering. To the pig on the truck, foaming at the mouth, there is only thirst. I am thirsty. <coughs> suffering is simplicity itself. It is all concern. What is not so simple is whether we respond to suffering in others. Because when faced with the suffering of others, we do one of three things. We shield ourselves from seeing. We see and wish we hadn't. Seeing but wanting to escape the seeing. Or we see and are transformed by it. And this is captured in my mother's reflection on this reflection in the second half of the book. She writes, I wished to God I had not seen those brutalized bodies hanging from hooks in the back of a truck. I wished to God I had not heard pigs crying in the heat at a rest stop. I wished to God I had not looked into the eyes of that cow staring into mine as I traveled behind. But I did see, and I did hear, and I did look, and it did change me. Now I wish to God for something entirely different. Not for my own escape from awareness, not for my own willful ignorance, but rather for a way out of their suffering and out of my complicity. I wish to God for rescue. And this brings us to the simplicity of suffering. I'm sorry. The simplicity of responding to suffering. And for this I chose, for the final reading, ironically, a reflection that was the first that my mother wrote in her journey towards this book. And it's called Beginning Somewhere. Put it off, cram it down, cover it up, turn aside, close my eyes, rot away from the inside out. Do anything but see, do anything but think, do anything but know. But I do know. A chicken is decapitated by an automated feeding cart and I am wrenched out of the disintegrating shelter of my own world and flung irretrievably into the helplessness of hers. I have seen and heard things that ought not to be. Love for the suffering ones has burst my heart open, and my grief has spilled out everywhere. I now have no way back to my personal garden of innocence and comfort without bringing them with me. Their suffering has become my suffering, their peace my peace. I know no other way to love. Suffering eyes speak to me. I will no longer abandon them. Whatever it costs me, I will find words for their agony, words strong enough to move the oppressors to mercy, words powerful enough to rescue those I love. Once our blinders have fallen away, and once we stop wanting to escape the awareness of suffering, then finally we come to the simplicity of responding to suffering, which is the simplicity of love. And love gives water to the thirsty.